Well, hey everyone, this is a first time review of the Blizzard Box cooler. It's a 12 volt DC refrigerator with a 120 volt AC power adapter. Um, it's a freezer and a fridge, depending on the temp sensing. And this is pretty much uh, a real time review of us uh, quickly seeing how this thing goes. We just got it yesterday, and we're quickly doing this because a fire is approaching us in Southern California. So this may come in very handy. Now in our Airstream trailer we have a uh, wireless thermometer system with three uh, remotes. The third one we use for our cooler box and we're going to put that inside the uh, blizzard box and see how it compares temperature wise. To now it's 12 minutes later after uh, ambient temperature is 65 and it's showing 23 degrees. And I can't believe it would drop that fast in that short of time. Let's take a look at something and we'll pull it out. Got a thermometer down here. And it's cold. It was not cold before. This is just out of the box. That's incredible. Wow. Now one thing that's really important for us in our trailer here is that we have a very small specifically sized cubby we can slide our cooler in and this unit actually fit just perfectly all the rest of the Dematics and ARBs all the rest that we looked at even though high ratings we could not fit them into that area now it hit 20 degrees which was what we set it for and the actual uh, compressor in the fan is shut off all you hear is like a little what sounds like water rushing through tubes very pleasant not annoying wow so less than 15 minutes it took it from an empty uh, canister from 65 ambient down to 20 degrees in 15 minutes and we put a watt meter on this thing so it shows 15 minutes this is on AC. It took uh, uh, what is that? 115 volts. No cost yet. And that was 0 0.01 kilowatt hour to get to ambient temperature. 0.01 kilowatt hour. Now at 15 minutes after, since it reached its 20 degree temperature, we're going to drop this down to zero and see how long it takes to get there. And keeping in mind this is an empty fridge with nothing in it, just uh, just open air. Let it rest. Okay. So we're at 22 now. Let's see how long it takes to get to zero. Now the fan, which is similar to a computer fan, is quiet, very, very um, quiet, but the mic microphone in the smartphone is really sensitive and it picks it up pretty loud, so it sounds louder in this recording than it actually is. You probably can't hear it eight feet away. Now during this time, the third measurement here is the other auxiliary thermometer inside there, which probably takes a good half hour <clears throat> to stabilize. And transmit so we'll see how that goes so again it's pretty windy outside right now and the decibel levels are very respectful um compressor on about 52 or so and um or even down to 48 we, we measured now here it is <clears throat> five minutes later and i must say it's very very windy outside we have the uh impending simi valley fires just about 15 minutes from us driving we may have to vacate. So anyway, there's also the neighbors <laughs> landscaper doing uh, blowing and mowing right now. So, so five minutes later, we're down to 11 degrees, according to this thermometer. Let's take a look and see what's up here. Okay, now the uh, third one is responding. It's kind of coming down a little bit. Now this has a big latency. You can take that portable thermometer outside and takes half an hour for it to stabilize so let's assume that's the case here now just a few minutes more 
We're an amazing seven degrees, if that's true. Now, one thing, it's got frontal vents here. You can hear a little bit of that uh, refrigerant probably just kind of boiling is what it's doing. And just a very slight airflow through the front three vents. Right here. Let's take a look. Now, even though this opens up from either direction, I'm going to open it from the open side here. Let's see what we got here. Lights up pretty nicely. It is darn cold in there. It's like a house fridge. No joke. I'm super impressed. For the $5.49 price from Costco, it's almost half the price of a competing unit in the size capacity, which actually fits really nice. 16 and a half high. <coughs> Pardon me, 16 and a point one high and I think 16.1 wide and I want to say it's 29 something deep but that fits perfectly in our little cubby here this is quite amazing utilizing the advanced Danvers technology compressor all right it's getting pretty uh pretty nasty blown out here all right here we are uh about 12 minutes again from start and now down to two degrees according to this thermometer now i'm going to pull it open the other side just for the hay of it this thing's pretty light too it has a locking mechanism and it's got rubber seals on the inside here which i didn't know from the uh youtube video so i'm impressed to see it's got that i'm putting my hand down here and it is cold it's like a it's like a house fridge i mean house freezer let me tell you this is another section here that's not so cold. But man, it is definitely happening. Let's see what happens here. So it, it looks like, if I didn't mess with it, it would probably have gotten down to zero degrees in 30 minutes. Oh. There it is. Now the fan stopped, and all you hear is a slight little rushing of the refrigerant, barely. And again, this test is all by its own 120 volt power supply. Elapsed time is 31 minutes. Let's see what we got here. 114 volts, 95 cents, and it's 0.02 kilowatt in use to get there. We'll have to figure that out with a watt meter. Now, within 30 minutes, this thing is responding and it's being more respectful of the actual temperature inside of the fridge. 35 degrees according to the external sensor. Very impressed so far. Now, a couple minutes later, it seems to come up a little bit in degree. So it actually turned back on to uh, cool it back down. But then again, there's nothing inside here. It's just free open space. So if there was cold food in there, things to keep it stable, it probably wouldn't have come back on yet. All right, so we're six hours later. Let's see here. Shows 10 degrees, two o'clock. Let's see what we have here. Kilowatts, it's 0.14 kilowatts. Six hours. At 19 cents or a kilowatt, it's uh, two cents with all of that. Now it's windy outside and it's pretty respectable decibel levels, operating conditions 37 range, and when the compressor's on at five feet, it's about 44, 45. Now let's test with a 12 volt battery inside and see how this thing does measuring current. We brought this inside for better um, testing purposes. So we're looking at about 3.5 amps when the compressor is actually running. And again, this is running off of just a standard um, gel cell battery for the purposes of this test. Now when we're resting, it drops down to 20 milliamps and 20 milliamps represents 
the current draw of just the lighting on the front of the panel. Small LEDs combined are drawing that and probably electronics as well. Let's go in a more sensitive setting on the voltmeter and we'll turn this up and we're going to plug it in and we're about 20.2 milliamps and that's just to power the lights and to keep the system awake for the thermostat. Again, pretty impressive stuff. Now back to the higher setting. Let's see what happens when we fire it back up and get the compressor running. We'll drop this uh, down a bit in temperature. And let's see what happens when the compressor kicks back on. Sorry for being upside down, but one-handed filming is always perfect. All right, so we're at 3.57 amps. It seems to dwindle down after it starts to do its thing. 3.7. Let's bring it back up a bit. Let's see what the current drop is down to. Point oh three amps, point oh two amps, twenty milliamps. Now let's cut the uh, power completely for one hour, and let's see what happens. Now there's no insulation, there's nothing in here, and let's see how it retains the cool without any power whatsoever. Now it came back up to forty-eight degrees, so what we're going to do is uh, go ahead and just power this back up and see how long it takes to get down to temperature. Now this time, the compressor is drawing a little bit more current, 4.45 amps. And let's see what happens and how long it takes to get down to temperature settings. Now this time, we're gonna go ahead and try additional testing with some real world food in here and see what happens. Close that up. It opens from both sides, very handy, and it locks down nice and solid. And the rubber seals. We're going to turn this back up and we'll set this down to, let's try 35 degrees. Almost 7 o'clock. Now it's 7.05, we're at 50 degrees. 707.35 33 actually so it actually stops at that and it took us about about 10 minutes to bring it down now it seems to oscillate around 35 degrees it probably comes down a little bit after it gains some temperature uh, momentum and then it comes back up a little bit So it rests for about seven minutes, and then the compressor comes back on for about almost two minutes in this case. So it's almost a uh, four to one ratio, maybe a five to one ratio. Now we always have a tendency to uh, use reflectix in our in our coolers, and we think that by sealing it up, it actually gives us a little bit more uh, cool retention. I don't know if that is the case in this with this blizzard box, but we cut one in and thought we'd put it in anyways. And if it uh, it can only help as long as we don't mess with the rubber seal, and that allows it to seal on its own around the reflectix. Again, opens from both sides, so very handy depending on how it's oriented in your vehicle. Okay, so we're doing another test here. We're going to go one hour with the Reflectix, starting at 35 degrees, and we're going to cut the power completely and go out and do a walk. 
So we'll come back about an hour later and let's see what the temperature settings when we turn it back on. Oh, it's 46. Okay, so it seems it uh, kept one degree in our favor by using Reflectix in this test with the extra food. So maybe, or, so depending on what type of uh, material you have in here, cans, bottles, different types of insulating things, the ons and off times might vary a bit. So um, essentially coming down into the settings, we've discovered some very interesting current draw settings for ampere hour usage. So overall, what we found out is that 70% ambient temperature in a 35 degree setting in the refrigerator, we have eight to 10 minutes of off time and two minutes typically on time of the compressor. It's a one to four, or one to five at best ratio. So if 15 minutes on at 3.5 amp, 0.85 ampere hours, and 45 minutes on at, that's 45 minutes off at uh, two milliamp or 0.02 amp, uh, adding those together, it's a 0.89 ampere hour rating per hour. That's less than one amp. And that's typically uh, just the FM radio playing. So you take that times 24 hours, you got 21.36 ampere hours use over a 24 hour period. So hopefully this answers a lot of the fine-tuned specifications that you could not find on the website of Type S uh, Manufacturing and or the Costco website. But we really wanted to know about this for boom docking and how much drain it would have on our batteries. If you register this with Type S, you'll get a double warranty for two years. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope it helps you out.